As clergy, we are tasked with a vocational responsibility to meet people where they are. One of the techniques used is known as reverent acknowledgement, an acknowledgement of the predominant emotions that seem to be wrapping the story that others are attempting to share, oftentimes in great detail. Jesus employs this technique in the opening verse of our text, do not let your hearts be troubled. He recognizes that the hearts of the disciples are troubled, can't really help but be troubled, for hanging out with Jesus can be troubling. While many were drawn to Jesus because of his ability to heal, encourage, and empower, many also resented Jesus' ability to heal, encourage, and empower, primarily because they were not able to connect with the people in similar ways. And these were people in very high positions, both in the government and in the church, who continually challenged Jesus to prove who he was and how he was able to do such works. The disciples witnessed these confrontations on many occasions, and after a while, it made sense that they would become and possibly remain in a state of being troubled. So Jesus offers a solution, albeit a daunting challenge as well, to believe in God, believe also in me. Ugo Betti, a great Italian playwright, suggests that when you want to believe in something, you also have to believe in everything that's necessary for believing in it. For the disciples, that which was necessary for them to truly believe in a God and to believe in Jesus also was a faith that was unwavering and a love that was boundless. All characteristics that Jesus, God incarnate, modeled for them throughout his ministry. So if you want to believe in God and to believe in Jesus also, you must believe in the power and efficacy of faith and love. As a pastoral counselor, I counsel many individuals who are struggling with their faith in God, even to the point of sometimes declaring their disbelief in God. Truth be told, life can hurl us so many curveballs that it can become easy to assume a position of bitterness and sourness as we try to make it from day to day. Illness racking our bodies, confusion invading our minds, and chaos ravaging not only our lives, but the lives of those close to us as well. So it would be easy to give up, to retreat, to throw in the towel, feeling that all is basically lost and filled with hopelessness. Having faith in a God who promises never to leave or to forsake, but also experiencing some of the stark realities that life hurls can be challenging at best. But if you are in the least bit open and non-resistant, at some point in time, God's hand of healing will move in your life. Many times it occurs when we reach a point of being sick and tired of being sick and tired. That becomes the point that we lay both our beauty and our brokenness in the presence of God. That becomes the point that our faith becomes real in ways that we never imagined. That becomes the point when our personal faith is actually experienced as the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. You've got to believe in the power and efficacy of that kind of faith if you want to believe in God and also in Jesus. It's also necessary to believe in the power and efficacy of love if you want to believe in God and also in Jesus. Living in a world in which love sometimes seems to be an invisible commodity, again, would make it easy to give up, to retreat, to throw in the towel, feeling that all is basically lost and filled with hopelessness. But we, as children of God, remain curious regarding the ways in which we might experience love. Philip asks Jesus to show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Show us the Father and we will then understand all that which you have been teaching us. For the truth of the matter is that Jesus had already revealed the Father through his works, works that were always grounded in and reflecting love. And Jesus implies that if you want to see God, reflect upon the works of love that you have witnessed from me. For those works reveal the way, the truth, and the life. 
the way, the truth, and the life, all embodied and modeled by me in love. In these difficult times of COVID-19, we too hear Jesus' words to his disciples. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. And we too are tasked with believing everything that is necessary for believing, an unwavering faith and a boundless love. Jesus foreshadows a new normal for the disciples as he attempts to prepare them for the future. And we find ourselves in a space of projecting what a new normal might reveal for us in these challenging times as well. So we try to endure living in a balance between the right now and the not yet in the best way we can. As for me, I need structure and a daily routine. So I promised myself that I would engage at least these three activities every day, else the day is incomplete. Number one, to practice my spiritual disciplines of prayer and reading scripture. Number two, to exercise, walking at least one mile. And number three, to shower. <laughs> Admittedly, some days I'm three for three, but other days, well, suffice it to say, God knows my heart. But in the midst of it all, I'm grateful to have the energy to even think about doing something. Sounds a bit trite, but I believe that any and every life-giving thought that even passes through our minds is a reminder that God is not only still in us, but around us as well. I marvel in God's handiwork as I take my daily walks, but upon returning home feeling a bit energized, I still find myself slumping back into the frustration of living within four walls that don't engage me in the ways that typically move me to excitement, happiness, and even to joy. As time has passed, however, I have allowed myself to sit in that space of frustration for a while, knowing that the blessing of time is that it never stands still. Whatever I may be going through one moment, will most definitely shift as the next moment wafts over me. Sometimes it's a moment that evokes a smile or laughter. Sometimes it's a moment that evokes the shedding of a tear. Sometimes it's a moment that evokes a curiosity for what the next moment will bring. I never know what the moment will bring, but I do know it will bring something new and different. The late Reverend Professor Peter Gomes suggests that there is a difference between optimism and hope. Optimism seeks to paint a picture of what and how you would like things to be. Hope, on the other hand, reveals a willingness to endure whatever you need to endure in order to experience the divine surprise. If ever we've needed a divine surprise, <laughs> we need it now. So let's hold on to hope, enduring whatever we need to endure until that one day when we will experience that divine surprise. In the meantime, if we believe in God and also in Jesus by having an unwavering faith and a boundless love, we can not only deepen this sacred relationship, but also become transformed into the people we were created to be. Troubling times will come and will occasionally shift the dynamics of our relationship with God and God incarnate, Jesus. But Jesus reminds us that I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. That can be a new normal when your heart is troubled. And that's good news. Amen.